Hello, and welcome to Phoenix Electra Circus. I am your host, Phoenix Electra, and today, because I've missed streaming, seven days is too long, and I thought that this American Lessons from the American System of Dressmaking was just way too much fun and confusing, so I thought, let's read through it together, at least the first lesson. So, let's scroll through. Loki thinks that it's time for snackies even though he just had some snackies. So this book is by Miss Pearl Merwin, supervisor of the American College of Dressmaking, published by the American College of Dressmaking, Associated Training Schools from Kansas City, Missouri, Missouri USA. Let's see here. Oh, I will make sure I pop the link for this from archive.org down in the descriptions. Copyright 1906789 by J.M. Steely, and again in 1910 and 12 by Associated Training Schools. Preface. The science of dressmaking and ladies' tailoring embraces a vast scope of knowledge, which, because of the very nature of the relation which they sustain the home and society becomes in a general way the common pro 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 oh my god david look at this property of all women beginning with the simplest forms and gradually developing chapter by chapter the more complicated phases <laughs> the more complicated phases of the profession the author has studiously driven to classify and crystallize this general knowledge into a tangible working system. The success of her efforts will depend largely, excuse me, upon the student's attitude toward the study and her desire to become proficient in the application of the principles outlined. This volume is intended to be at once a complete and comprehensive textbook for the beginner and a handy guide for the seamstress in the home and a ready reference for the graduate and professional dressmaker. The large printed drafts and tailor's square which accompany the lessons are essential to an intelligent application of the American dressmaking system. Unfortunately, being a web version, I do not have this so aforementioned square and printed drafts. Does anybody know where these, do these things still exist somewhere? Welcome, Replay Crew. Welcome to my seven followers over on the Rumbles. I really appreciate you all. So let's take a look here in the table of contents. Lesson one, introduction and rules. Sewing stitches, basting, running, backstitch, overcasting, overhanding, hemming, cat stitching. Loki, they're talking about you with cat stitching. Feather stitching, hem stitching, French seam, fell seam, French hem, French knots, buttonholes, tailored buttonholes, eyelets, loops, sewing on buttons, button molds, smocking, diamond smocking, honeycomb smocking, hem stitching on machine, sheaf, sheaf stitch, herringbone stitch, bagoting, single stitched seam, broad broad seam stitch, welt seam, double stitched welt, open welt, double slit, double stitched slot seam, strap seam, oh no, go back, where are we, strap seam, imitation strap seam, raw edge lapping, lapped seam, cord seam, bias bands and folds, joining of bias strip, milliner's fold, silk folds, making straps for seams, crow foot, mark stitching, cording, shirred cording, tucked shearing, French shearing, and ruching with 57 illustrations. We'll see how many of these lessons we get through, how many of these stitches we can practice today because I do have some fabric, some thread, and my needle dolly with scissors. Lesson two, we will get to go review 
how to proceed the new steel square taking measurements drafting a two-piece back and two dart front for a tight fitting lining drafting a three a three piece block and a two dart front for tight fitting lining for a 40 inch bust measure and over bust measure and over whoa so this is not for tiny humans if they're expecting the bust to be 40 inches plus which Wow, fortunately, I am not that, I'm not, I'm busty, but not that busty. We have testing measure, tracing, no, go back. Lesson three, testing measures, tracing the lining, drafting a tight fitting sleeve, tracing and cutting the sleeve lining, shirt waist sleeve, bishop sleeve, elbow sleeve, three quarter length sleeve, a mouse is that a mouseketeer sleeve leg o mutton sleeve with six illustrations lesson four basting lining of waist basting sleeve lining fitting the waist lining fitting the sleeve lining stitching lining and finishing seams arranging for hooks and eyes second fitting fitting a lining over a form pressing a pressing boning a waist Let's see here. Finishing bones at top, hook and eye bone, hook and eye bone. Hmm. Three cord tape to a three cord tape to to bone coats with three cord tape. Collar bone. Drafting a shirt waist. Tucking. Fitting a shirt waist. Drafting a neckband of a shirt. Waist shirt. Waist sleeve. Different methods of finishing the shirt waist sleeves. We have 51 illustrations in this illustrious lesson. Lesson 5. How to draft patterns for waists shown in fashion plates. A tucked waist with yoke and fancy trimming portion. Waist with insertion between clusters of tucks. The mannish shirt waist. The Gibson waist. Tucked kimono waist. Draping. How do we have 26, 11 illustrations? I don't understand what that means. Lesson six, plain tight fitting waists, basting material on lining, the one piece yoke and collar, the circular tucked yoke to draft a stock collar, drafting a wrapper collar, sailor and Dutch collars, sailor blouses, drafting a circular cuff and how to fit irregular and disproportionate figures. The round-shouldered and over-erect figure, the very prominent or very small bust figures, square shoulders, sloping shoulders, 21 illustrations. Lesson 7. Skirt measurements, relative proportions, drafting top of skirt, though this is the one we practiced, <laughs> testing hip line, constructing the waistline, testing waistline, drawing dart lines, inverted pla plate, Extension of gores, adding flare, cutting the skirt, basting the skirt, fitting the skirt. Three illustrations. Lesson eight. Stitching the skirt, finishing the seams, finishing the placket. Six methods. Finishing the bottom, drafting five gore skirt, drafting five gore skirt, five gore flare skirt, drafting nine gore skirt, Nine gore flare skirt, drafting 15 gore skirt, 15 gore flare skirt, general instructions for adding flare to skirts with 12 illustrations. Lesson nine, get back here. How to finish a drop or foundation skirt, graduated flounces, accordion plated flounce, walking skirt, Finishing bottom of a walking skirt, putting on a brush braid, the high or raised waistline skirt, skirt yokes, peplum, side plated skirts. Oh, can I, should I, can I do this instead? Oh, okay. Okay. 
there. That okay. Let's see here. With lesson ten, we did that. skirts with flounces, tucks at bottom of skirt, skirts with uneven number of gores, skirts with even number of gores, box plated skirts, double box plated skirts, irregularities in skirt drafting, changing drafts for different figures, variances from general rule of cutting cutting stripes and plaids. Lesson 11, bands or folds used in trimming skirts. Skirts of bordered material, how to draft skirts shown in fashion plates. Skirts with inlet plates, the skirt with small tucks at the top, skirt with front and back panel and trimming band at bottom between the panels and graduated distance. No. Graduated distance from the bottom. Skirt with deep flounce at the bottom, finished in different ways. Four-piece yoke skirt with side-plated flounce. Seven-gore skirt with side-plated flounce of a regular outline. Tunic or overskirt. Eight-gore skirt with four long gores and four shorter ones lengthened by plated sections. Three skirt models with side gores, a regular in outline. 25 illustrations. Lesson 12. Tailor-made suits. Shrinking the material. Drafting a semi-fitting coat. Adding collar and lapels. Drafting a tight-fitting coat. Drafting a tailor's cushion. The lined coat. Cutting the canvas. Cutting the hair cloth. Padding stitches. Sewing on the collar and arranging... The facings, the interlining, the sleeve, the cuff, the lining, sleeve lining, the outlined coat, the unlined coat, hmm. interlining suitable for different materials, the shawl collar, finishing the seams with 26 illustrations. Lesson 8. Coat pockets. Different methods of applying pockets, making fancy collars, an evening coat, Russian blouse coat. Skirt portion for the Russian blouse coat. I might have to do this one. Draft, actually, we're going to read through the lessons and I'm going to practice these skills so we can see what we can learn from this. So there will be some sewing eventually. But where are we? Drafting a fitted belt, the flat collar, fur and fur cloth coats, an evening or auto cape with 31 illustrations. Let's see here. Lesson 14. The princess, seven gore princess, 15 gore princess, semi fitting princess, princess slip, wrappers, dressing sacks, ooh, matching figures and matching figures and plaids, garments for maternity wear, 13 illustrations. Next we have. Infant's first outfit, drafting a front of an infant's slip, drafting back of slip, drafting sleeve of slip, cutting and making the slips, nightgowns, the band, the shirt, pinning blanket, drafting petticoat, kimonos, the one-piece sack infant's coat, infant's cape, infant's comforters, pillow slips, boo oh, booties, etc. Little girl's clothing, making little girls kimono, rompers, Russian dress, and Russian coat, loose coat, surplice, surplice dress, semi-princess, with 32 illustrations. Lesson 16. Men's apparel, negligee shirt, taking the measurements, drafting front and back of shirt, shirt with and without yoke in back, drafting sleeve, neckband, collar, and band in one, attached collar with turnover and band in one, drafting pocket, how to buy and shrinking shirting, how to cut and put the shirt together, interlinings of collar, cuffs, etc., protection neckband, making detached cuff and collar, plated shirt, nightshirt, bathrobe, 16 illustrations. Lesson 17. Drafting boys' knee pants, front of pants, pockets, 
front facings, finishing seams, boys' Russian blouse suit, Norfolk jacket, muslin underwear, feminine, drafting a plain drawer, pattern, method of applying insertion, drafting a band for drawers, drafting a circular drawer pattern, drafting a shirt yoke, drafting a tight-fitting corset cover, an embroidery corset cover, mm, a brassiere, seamless corset cover, two methods of making combination suits, applying insertion lace, drafting a child's one-piece drawers, 30 illustrations, lesson 18, drafting an Eton coat with a sailor collar, different styles of Eton coats, a sack coat, a practical auto cap, the divided equestrian skirt, 14 illustrations. Lesson 19, traveling outfit, outfit for a western trip, outfit for a trip to the south, necessary articles on a needed on a trip abroad, fashions for the seaside, fancy dresses for costume parties, the wedding trousseau, wedding etiquette, graduation dresses, dresses for morning wear, seven illustrations. Lesson 20, embroidery stitches most commonly used in dress decoration, how to use a transfer pattern, illustration and detailed description of outline or stem stitch, couched outline, feather stitch, ordinary chain stitch, double chain, twisted stitch, split stitch, button holing, walla chain stitch, cross stitch, seating or dot stitch, lazy daisy or bird's eye stitch, french knot, darning stitch, bagoting, long and short so long and short, sat in stitch, French stem stitch, flat, overcast, back, arrowhead, wheat, German knot, braid, twisted running stitch, how the foregoing stitches are applied, how to choose thread and silks, articles necessary in an, in an embroidery outfit, important points in the work, embroidery combined with net, lace, etc., 43 illustrations. Lesson 21. The belts, girdles, and sashes. The straight, narrow, tailored belt. Bias belt. Belts of more than one section. Practical and attractive tailored belts. Appropriate belts for different forms. Fitting a canvas foundation. Ribbon belts. Narrow crushed belts and girdles made of either made either over a boned foundation or feather bone applied to a fitted belt, crushed belts of fancy ribbon, attractive narrow girdle, practical girdle for the average form, shirred belt or girdle, plated belts and girdles, deep fitted crushed girdles, girdles of insertion and tucks used in combining a lingerie skirt and waist. Suitable material for sashes, appropriate sashes for different forms, finishings for upper and lower part of sashes, amount of material for sashes, belts and sashes for children, 39 illustrations. Lesson 22, braiding, stenciling, eyelet, or Madeira embroidery. Braiding, kinds of braids, kinds of braids for different purposes and materials. How to apply wide braid. I've got brains on the brain. That word is braids in straight and angular lines. How to apply wide braids in curves and loops. Braid combining with braid combined with embroidery beads etc. How to select a good braiding. Oops. Braiding pattern. Apply, applying coronation braid. Braiding on velvet, satin, chiffon, and net. Soutache braid applied by machine or hand. 
Soutache braid applied flat or edgewise, how to fit a straight braiding pattern around corners and curves, difference in designs for dressy and tailored models, methods of applying braiding design to different fabrics, color of braid to be used, stenciling, most important points to consider in the work, the mechanical part of it, selecting the designs and colors in paints and fabrics, designing a pattern, making a stencil, preparing tapestry dyes, indelible stencil pastes used, standing, stand, oh, standard colors in oil tube paints, how to mix oil paints, thinning medium, how to test color before applying on the real work, thin and heavy materials suitable for stenciling, making best background for any color pigments, material and pigments suitable for stencil stenciled coat sets, how to shape and stencil and place the design on a collar and cuff, how to prepare stencil and place design on a belt, brushes needed, how to make a stencil pad, how to use stencil on spotting, how to apply paint, method of stenciling thin fabrics, how to use two or more shades in the in same design, stenciling embellished with embroidery, laundering stencil works, stencil outfit, 21 illustrations. Lesson 23, trimming, beading, materials employed, shape, color and size of beads, beads suitable for certain materials, how to prepare a garment for beading, different methods used in applying beads, stitch used to simulate beads, straps and bands, straight, bias, wide and narrow, how to apply, double bias binds, double bias bands of striped material, an attractive design on narrow strapping, a jacket vest developed in two shades of broadcloth combined with braid and embroidery with cuff and skirt trimming to match, design of narrow straps with narrow straps interwoven with each other with instructions for applying, use of braid desi braiding designs for strapping, graduated bands, Lace, shirring, quilling, trimming bands, piped, shirred, embroidered on net in satin stitch and darning, of soutache braid combined with French knots, of shadow embroidery and darning combined with beading, of beading and embroidery on net, of coronation braid combined with darning, French knots or satin stitches of rope silk and tinsel braid on net, of rope silk and soutache braid on ribbon, embroidered in the satin stitch, in chain stitch on net, with all over embroidery to match, applique, medallion motifs, garnitures, festoons, buttons, 38 illustrations. Lesson 24, designing. Definition of term, what is meant by Mo, mo, oh, is that modest? Is that how you say that word? Modest dressmaker and seamstress. Why study anatomy? Why study of anatomy is important in designing. Why the study of temperament is essential with different de, with reference to color as well as lines. <laughs> this is so funny. Seasonableness in colors. Aid of observation in designing. Conforming dress to figure, misapplication of lines, proportional study of the model figure, when a correct, when a figure is short-waisted, when a figure is long-waisted, correct lines for a figure with a short waist and long skirt, correct lines for a figure with a long waist and short skirt, correct lines for various other types, trimming and material appropriate for certain types, the proper balance of a sleeve, waist and coat, 
Summary of lines for certain types. Harmony of colors. Study of nature for harmony. Origin of color. Table of colors. Complementary, tertiary, and secondary colors. Warm and cold colors. Tints and casts in color. Blondes. Genuine, vivid colored. Colorless, ash. Red-haired, sallow. Brunettes. Genuine, creamy, fair, sallow, olive skinned. 21 illustrations. Lesson 25 Designing Continue. Continued Origin of Material Silk, Wool, Cotton, Linen, Pattern of Material, Smooth and Rough Materials, Material for Specific Purposes. Material ad adapted to figures, medium figures, origin of fashions, evolution of the corset, lingerie, review of fashions from the 13th century to the present, summary of styles from 1820 to 1911, styles of a hundred years past compared with present day, 25 illustrations. Lesson 26. Embroidery stitches, honeycomb mesh, triangular buttonholing, lattice or cat, Turkish or shadow, where employed, thread to use, colors to use, designs suitable for, and how to transfer designs on a material. Detail of working, shadow applique, material suitable for, transfer of patterns, basting applique, appropriate colors, special designs suited to, method of finishing edges of, French shadow work, how the threads are drawn, how to make a design in detail of, damask stitch, twisted bars, woven spider stitch, ribbed wheel, ribbed wheel, Bermuda fagoting, making... Making materials suitable for different methods of working, applying lace or insertion with, with, employed on dainty underslips, shirt waists, etc. Romanian embroidery, characteristics of, colors used, materials suitable for, embroidered and fancy buttons, covered button with tiny frills or plated silk lace, etc. in cut work. In eyelet and French embroidery, in outlining, eyelet and seed stitch, in satin stitch and French knots, in jewels or beads and embroidery, in ri ribosin, ri ribosin, chenille, and French knots, in various materials and designs, in woven designs, Greek cross, ribbed wheel, etc. Differences in covering button molds to be used as trimmings and as fastenings, in jets and gold thread, in seed beads, in stenciling, braided, lace-covered, simulated buttonholes, blind, uh, blind of braid, detail of applying of cord, bound, how and where used, braided frogs and pendants, how used, designs, designs for detail of making, 20 illustrations. Lesson 27. Dress accessories, neckwear, jabots, plated, made from embroidered handkerchiefs and lace of embroidered linen in tailored effect of satin or silk, neckbands with mannish bow and fancy ends of different width ribbon in two tones of cord of velvet of silk decorated in ribbon flowers, neck bows and ties, detail of making of ribbon, plated velvet or silk, embroidered arrow ship bow, cravats and when to be worn, deep turn down collars, plain and plated Dutch collars, fancy stocks, materials suitable for, lined and unlined, boning and finishing, tailored stock and tie, 
collar and cuff sets, correct material for different uses. Fichu, 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 fichu shapes and suitable materials for sashes, finish it, sashes finished in fringe, tassels, or balls with detail of making, rosettes for your sash end, scarfs, materials for selecting the lining and how to line of filmy lightweight materials of velvet and fur, finishing ends of handbags, shopping, party, or opera, velvet embroidered and metallic gauze or cloth embroidered fancy silk of washable material, ribbon, bow, ribbon bows, important points in making, making a tied bow, a sewed bow, how to calculate the amount of ribbon for, ribbon accessories, sunflower rosette, scalloped rosette, 24 illustrations. Lesson 28, ribbon flowers, materials for velvets, for violets, methods for making with different width ribbon, forget-me-nots, ribbon for flowers, material for foliage, detail of making flowers and buds, daisies, wild roses, cutting and making petals, petals, detail of the bud, putting the flower together, foliage to use, rosette of rosebuds, double roses, differences in shape and method of putting petals together in different varieties, American beauty, making the center of the rose, petals, putting the seed pod, calyx, and petals together, La France, detail of making center petals and buds, Mara Maracol Neal, how to vary size of roses, hat pins, parasols, general shape and number of divisions, how to recover an old one, materials used, methods of decorating, buckled buckles, beaded, shirred, silk of ribbon, embroidery and jewels, belts, embroidered, braided and beaded accessories for the bride accessories for the graduate 32 illustrations lesson 29 equipment for the home dressmaker pressing boards dress forms skirt gauge constructing a form for one's own use sewing machines fitting up a dressmaking fitting up a dressmaking shop sewing room hints Pinking, length of children's and girls' skirts to test different materials, methods of increasing trade, how to advertise your services, art of packing a trunk. Lesson 30, household recipes, improvement in managed shirt waist draft, improvement in the kimono waist, modifications, improvements, and glossary of technical terms. Sounds and looks great. Oh, thank you. So now that we've gotten through the inter the first part, we are now needing a sip. Because that was a lot of reading here. Hold on one second. The American system of dressmaking. And this is the same cover. So here we've got lesson one. We'll probably get through the introduction and we'll start the actual lessons next week. And I'm pretty sure the way this project is going, this might be, take us two years to get through all these lessons. So join me every Friday at three o'clock unless I tell you otherwise. And we will slowly but surely make our way through all 30 of these lessons because I'm intrigued and I just thought it would be a fun exercise. So here we are. Thank you. All right. Oops, don't turn too many pages. Okay. So this is... The American system of dressmaking taught only by 
the American College of Dressmaking, Kansas City, Missouri. No, go back. Miss Pearl Merwin, Supervisor. Lesson number one, introduction. All right, should we, let me readjust because my feet are falling asleep. All right. For a great many years, for, for a great many years, much has been known of making beautiful tapestries, embroideries, and needlework. But the great problem of putting the art of plain sewing on a scientific basis and making it a part of a woman's education is just now being solved. To meet the growing demand for more practical methods and to supply the long-felt want that has been but sparingly met by the use of patterns, the American College of Dressmaking has spared neither time nor expense in the preparation of these lessons. Since, in any work, a thorough understanding of the rudiments is essential, so in sewing, the first step is to implement these elements and principles, which are the foundation of all needlework, and each part should be so thoroughly mastered that the next becomes easy. Thus, we have arranged a course of 25 lessons so systematically that each succeeding lesson is a natural stepping stone to what follows. Study these lessons carefully and diligently, as much depends upon the aptness, energy, and spirit with which you enter the work. You cannot become a successful dressmaker unless you manifest every interest in the study and put forth every effort to carry the work through from start to finish without dragging. Nor do we want you to rush through with the course and the course with a view to finishing in the shortest possible time, but rather to study each lesson until you are thoroughly familiar with every part of it before taking up another. If at any time there are any points that you do not perfectly understand to your own satisfaction, write and ask us on the special blank furnished for that purpose, and information will be cheerfully and promptly given. I think we might be SOL if we have questions or problems. <laughs> All right. Hopefully we can be able to consult the internet or other YouTubers or Instagrammers or Twitchers or Rumblers or locals. We'll see how this goes. If at all possible, arrange your work so that, a, that at, so that a certain time, say an hour or two, more or less each day, may be set aside for this special study. Permit no other task or duty to take its place. If possible, it is well to have a little room that you can call your study and sewing room where you can withdraw from other duties and apply your energies to the work at to the work in hand you will find it very convenient provide yourself with a good tape yardstick tracing wheel a sharp pair of scissors and a good pencil rules number 1 when sending in report papers for correction and grading, be sure to write your name at the top of the first sheet and pin the sheets together. Your name is of the utmost importance, as oftentimes we receive papers with no name on them and therefore cannot return them. We cannot know who they are from. Out of thousands of students, we cannot remember where each paper is from and what the name is. Number two, for practice in drafting, you can get wrapping paper cheap at most any store or newspaper will do. For drafts which you send in for our inspection, use the drafting paper which we furnish. Also, use the ruled paper we supply in on which to write your answers. Number three, 
in answering the questions at the close of each lesson, do not repeat the question, but number the answer to correspond with the question. Leave a blank space between your answers and place number of answers in the middle of space, beginning your writing close up to the printing along the left margin of paper. Either pencil or pen and ink may be used. No chalk, crayons, or paint. Write on both sides of the paper, turning the page vertically. I guess this is an up and down. I don't understand. R number five, write any questions you may wish to ask on the special question blanks. Six, have your lessons so thoroughly prepared that you will not have to refer to the lesson in order to answer a question. Seven, criticisms and errors will be found marked with red ink or blue pencil and answers checked to show they have been carefully read over. Eight, if, after sending in your answers and waiting a reasonable length of time, they have not been returned to you, kindly write us. They may have been lost in the mail, and we ask that you exercise a little patience and thought and not censure us entirely. Nine, use the return envelope which we furnish if, however, you prefer to use a plain one, write our address clearly. All right, so they're very thorough in their instructions here. Okay. Oops, I keep. Sewing stitches. In sewing, as in embroidery, the beauty of the work depends largely upon the smoothness and evenness of the stitches. Uniformity in length of stitches and straightness of line are the utmost importance. The mistake is often made by using a needle too large and thread too coarse for the material, and vice versa. Do not use a long thread and to avoid do not use a long thread and to avoid knotting and tangling. Thread the needle with the end that hangs from the spool. After threading, make a knot at the longest end by twisting the end of the thread once and a half around the first finger of the left hand, then roll downward on the ball of the thumb, twisting once or twice and slip off and draw down to the end of the thread with the middle finger. Should we try to figure out how they try to teach us how to thread a, thread a needle? Let me, let's pick out a needle. Am I gonna be able to see with this eye? Yeah, let's try this needle. Okay. So we have some thread. I know this is black thread and I'm going to be using white, but in an attempt for our stitches to show up, I thought we would use some high contrast. So what does it say? We need to find the edge. The thread. It's okay. Do not use the, a long thread. All right, so let's go. I don't know what they mean by long. We've got, I don't know, 20... Four inches. I'm going to clip the thread. Okay, so this is the thread. They said something about the thread from the spool. Okay. And to avoid knotting and tingling, thread the needle with the end that hangs from the spool. Oh, did they mean that we were supposed to thread it before we cut it? Could that be what they meant? Okay, needle thread. After threading, make a knot at the longest end. Okay, so this is just folded in half. 
Okay, after threading, make a knot at the longest end by twisting the end of the thread once and a half around the first finger. So once and a half. Then roll downward on the ball of the thumb, twisting once or twice. Slip the edge off and drawn down to the end of the thread with the middle finger. All right, okay. It's a good thing that this is how my grandmother taught me. Maybe she used this sewing manual, but all right, we have a knot. Stitches commonly used are the basting, running, overcasting, overhanding, hemming, and cat stitching. So here we are on page, no, I just wanna go back to page six. Okay, so first we have basting. There are two kinds of basting stitches, even and uneven. Even basting is made by passing the needle over and under the material, making the stitches in spaces of equal length. See figure one. All right, so here we have, this looks like the knotted end. Uh, even basting is made by passing the needle over and under the material, making the stitches and spaces of equal length. See figure one. In uneven basting, the stitch and space are not the same length. The stitch is taken... All right. That was a lot to take in from our lesson. So... Thanks for everybody who came out and hung out with me while we learned how to thread and tie a knot in our needle. And we will continue this exercise next Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with the learning of the stitches. For the rest of you, I will be here again tomorrow, probably not this chair, in a different location for our next in the series of Shop My Stash Saturday where we will be looking at my College Knits magazine. I'm pretty sure it's from Lion Brand. It's a little worse for the wear, but let's see what knitting we have. And then, let's see here, today's Friday, is that Saturday? And Sunday at noon p.m., we will be back for the Stitch and Bitch. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be more, no, I'm pretty sure, there will be eyelets and more lace insertions, and we'll see how long we can go because these projects need to get done. I've got other things I want to work on, and we've got this entire manual. So maybe I should... There we go. All right. Thanks for hanging out with me. It's been great. I'll see you tomorrow. Leave me a like. Leave me a comment. Follow me on the YouTubes, on the Instagrams, on the Rumbles, on the Locals, and... I'll see you all when I see you all next. All right. Bye.